Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's 8, 11 a.m. It's Monday, and it's August 23rd, 2012. Amen. Tomorrow's actually my wife and I's anniversary. So anyway, um, what a beautiful, uh, what a beautiful experience that fast was. Um, how many people woke up hearing from the Lord, and how many people woke up under attack by the enemy? I'm going to tell you one thing that I've learned in, in the ministry is that both are understandable in my opinion. You heard from the Lord, you were focused on the Lord. If you came under attack, it's because uh, the enemy sees you as a threat. Either way, it's a win-win. Um, and you should just learn to expect that. Because this ministry is all about growth, growing in him. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. You know, he was talking about spiritual things. He, everything he was talking about was spiritual. Everything Jesus Christ talked about was spiritual. So, like, for me, this instance, this morning, you know, I went to bed early last night. Actually, I, I think my wife and I fell o'clock after 10 o'clock. I, I wasn't even 11 yet. I know that for sure. And uh, I slept soundly and solidly. Uh, no warning alerts. No, it was just resting in him, having known that I, I'd, I'd done something pleasing for God. And... When I woke up this morning, I had a lot of different thoughts. A lot of different thoughts. I'm trying to remember what some of them were. Uh, some of them were, you know, I missed that feeling of fire. Some of it were, um, um, you know, I was thinking about uh, it, it's a week from today that I leave for the, the four day conference. You know, I'm going to do videos. Uh, hopefully, Lord willing and God giving me strength, after these full day conferences at night, I'm going to pour out uh, what was poured into me in video. Whatever word God gives me at night, I'll make videos. Try to anyway, from Anaheim. Um, my mind just began to wander on a lot of things. And um, I just jumped in the shower early. I think I got up like it's uh, 7 a.m. Me and my wife, the first thing I did was refocus back on Jesus Christ. And I realized that as a human being, um, I, I'm not 100% in heaven yet. I'm, I'm still uh, enduring a race that, you know, when, when Paul said he ran the race with endurance, and he talked about the Roman, I'll give you something real quick. When he talked in Ephesians 6, when he writes about the, when they, when the Bible is recorded, the, the gospel, where he's, they're chained to the wall. And it, 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 and it talks about the armor, the breastplate of righteousness and the sword. You know what? He was chained to a wall. He, he wrote that in prison, I'm, I'm told. And he was describing the exact uh, armament his his uh, enemies, I guess, the ones who locked him up, uh, looked like a Roman soldier. And and uh, you know they would go in the Colosseums and do all these crazy crazy things. He was he was saying, look, run the race with endurance. He was playing. It, it was going to take some uh, some uh, some endurance. Like you know, has anybody here ran a marathon? It's not just a sprint, you know, a, a hundred yard dash to the finish line and you're done. Hallelujah, made it. It's a marathon. And I'm telling you, we're in a marathon. And so how can we best uh, follow up on this fast today other than drinking some tea? Amen. <laughs> well, the first thing you can do is get your mind off the world and get it focused on Jesus. And realize that it's it's in Him that we live and move and have our being. And I, and then don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so I'm going to read some word. And I want to get everybody and, and anybody that views this. If you're thinking on worldly things, 
and you're thinking on things of this world or cares or you have fears or anxiety or you're under spiritual attack and you, you don't have full peace, full joy and feel led to just lift your hands up and praise God, we're going we're gonna to go there right now. How? First of all, everybody just say, praise the Lord, thank you Jesus. I don't care how you feel, I don't care, uh, you know, really, uh, it doesn't matter, I'll say it like this, it doesn't matter if you're sick, it doesn't matter if you're in pain, I get aches and pains too. Um, it, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, really, uh, unless you're out of work, and they will terminate you for praising the Lord, which is pretty sad, you know, lift up your hands and just tell the devil that you're, uh, look, I am a child of God. He calls me friend. You know, he, he bestows mercy upon me and grace. And I love him. You feel that? He just changed the whole environment around him. Just begin to praise and worship him as one body. Now we're going to go to the Word. I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. I woke up and a, a, a scripture dropped right in my spirit. But it wasn't until I started focusing on Jesus. I'm like, and then he began to talk to me. Draw nigh to me, I draw nigh to you. And he dropped in a scripture, and I looked it up, and it's Romans 12. So I, I read it to my wife. We do every morning. Read her the word. We prayed. And I was saying, and it says, I beseech you there for brethren. And, and, and I was telling her, you know, sometimes I'll do this, even though she probably already knows. I'm like, he's begging them. Like, look, I beg you, brethren. So I, I started reading it, and I knew that I was, I said, I'm going to make a message on this this morning. It's perfect. And then I put it in the Amplified, and sure enough, it says the word begging. So, once again, I know I've heard from God, and let's go right to the Word and start our day off living our life pleasing unto our Holy Savior, who's coming back for us. And until then, let's just endure. Romans 12, Amplified, and I'll put a link. You, you can read it in whatever uh, translation you do. I don't dictate to you what translation. You're to read that. One thing I want you to know, because there's a lot of YouTube channels on here, I don't dictate. I just put out the Word of God. It's up to you to receive it, and it's up to you to pray to God, because, you know, we may never meet. I hope sometimes we do meet, but if we do meet, it's going to be in heaven, and uh, it's, it's between you and God. You know, I'm just putting out the Word of God and planting seeds, but see, your relationship is with Him, but also, we got to come together and, and fellowship together as one body. So, um, I'm going to read this and Amplified. Ready? Romans 12. He, uh, he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren. In other words, okay, look, he, he's, this is in, he's, he's talking to the Romans. That's why it's called Romans, right? But when he says brethren, he's not talking to the lost Romans or the ones who, who beat Jesus or, you know, the ones walking around in the street. He's, he's writing a letter to the brothers and sisters that are in the body of Christ. You with me on that? So he's saying, look, I, he's making an appeal to them. Uh, uh, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties. First, let me read it in the King James, amen. So. So everybody, first of all, understand that this scripture was dropped in my spirit as I began to focus on the Lord today. Let me put that, uh, let me start this off in the King James, so, cause, so you can kind of get in a, a, a feeling for, for where I'm going with this. This is, this is a, this is a very famous scripture. He says, I beseech you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that, present, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, over here in the Amplified, he's saying, look, I'm making an appeal to you, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm begging you that, understanding that, because God has showed all these mercies on you. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to read this in the King James, just as it was given to me. And you know, well, we're just going to get wisdom. Uh, and revelation knowledge from God. Uh, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. In other words, look, because God has showed you the mercy that you uh, you didn't deserve, I'm making an appeal to you, I'm begging you, uh, you know, that that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. In other words, you got to make a sacrifice today. 
I don't know what you're going through, but I know what you're going through. But you got to make a sacrifice today. Why? He says, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, uh, in the Amplified for reasonable, it says rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. So in other words, he said, look, you got to get up today in spiritual worship and make a sacrifice to God because he's shown you mercy, uh, you know, um, because there's an enemy out there who wants to get your mind off Jesus. And I'm begging you, God has shown you mercy and we have a job to do down here. And, and I'm begging you, look, let's come together, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ and, and sacrifice to God what we're going to do today. It, it's a sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world. Don't conform to this world because you know where this world's going to? To hell. Uh, conformed is fashion after or adapt to or, uh, or it's superficial customs. But be ye transformed, which means changed. Be ye transformed or let your mind change uh, by the renewing of your mind. Why are we doing all this? It's in verse 2, Romans 12, verse 2. Why are we doing all this, what, what, what the apostle is writing about here under the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Now, we can prove what is that good. Prove to who? Ourselves? Man, I'm telling you, this, this is the deep revelation. No, prove to the world. We're not going to conform to the world. As a matter of fact, we're, because of the God, mercy God has shown upon us, we're going to renew our mind back on Jesus Christ, uh, and then we're going to go out as the light and salt of the world. Uh, and prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Everywhere you go today, after this fast, you got to realize there's an enemy out there, and you got to renew your mind, and you got to go be that light, and you got to be that salt. You know why? Because the whole world is lost, and the only light they may see today is you, saints. And the reason why you're doing it is not so you're because you're somebody, because God showed mercy on you. You, you, you're, you're mandated, you're commissioned, you're, you're commanded actually to go be that light. And you can't be a light because the world is in darkness. You can't conform to this world. You're only a light when you transform your mind and let Jesus flow to you. And the best way I know to get to Jesus is by opening my mouth and just giving him praise. For I say, through the grace given unto me. So, so okay, how many people has had grace bestowed unto them? To every man that is among you, or woman, to all of us, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. In other words, you may come out of this thing on fire, but you're only on fire because God gave you the fire. So remember what I said? You, you can remain humble and still just spit fire of God, his word and everything. But to think soberly, let's see what soberly says in the Amplified. But to rate his ability with sober judgment. Okay, so. Well, I know what sober means to me. Clear-minded and not drunk and not your head spinning around. According as. Now, watch this. This really spoke to me. Because, understand, I read this to my wife. It began to speak life into both of us. According as God to every man the measure of faith. So, look. God has given every one of us. Every person in the whole world. A measure of faith they have some measure I mean how many people get a measuring cup go get a two cup measuring cup and look at how many different marks there are on there everybody got some measure of faith because there's a gift of faith that'll fill that thing all the way up to the top when God needs to activate it man and we imparted that gift through God remember Okay, so now watch this. Okay, so we all got faith, and we're all to go out there and use that faith. For as as we have many members in one body, okay, so we're the body of Christ. Don't look at this body. Let's let's picture all of us here that's watching this as the body of Christ. We're one body. We're not divided. We're unified. Uh, and all members have not the same office, right? Okay, so like I have a prophetic gift. That doesn't mean you have to have a prophetic gift. Uh, I may, I may, uh, I may have a dream. You may interpret that dream. 
Uh, you may you may give a word of knowledge. I may have the gift of wisdom to know what that not what we're supposed to do with that knowledge. We have we uh, the gifts of God. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They complement each other. Hallelujah. When we come together as one in one accord, like in the upper room. You know, I can't just out there and go prophesy by myself and and not have anybody with wisdom and knowledge and understanding and and faith and and healing. I mean, if all we all did was prophesy, there'd be no healing. How about this? The person gets healed and set free and delivered. And then we prophesy to them. And then someone with wisdom comes along and tells them what that prophecy uh, uh, is, is going to do in their lives. And then they go out and take it to their whole city and tell the whole city. My goodness. Can I get a witness? How good is God? So we being many are one body in Christ, verse 5, and every and every one members one of another. Having then gifts, how many people know the gifts of God are spiritual? They they differ according to the grace that is given to us. You know, grace is unmerited favor, and favor isn't fair. Have you ever turned, heard that firm favor isn't fair in the church all over the place? In other words, you may see me on fire here on prophesying, and you may be wondering, well, why is he having all these dreams and all these visions? Or, you know, I, I've got a lot of people having even stronger dreams and stronger visions or, or speaking the oracles of God in amazement. I look at them, I'm like, how did they do that? Well, God's showing favor over their life. I've seen people, I mean, for two years, I just had everything going perfectly right for me. Well, God was showing favor on my life. And the whole, when the favor of God is upon you, the whole world will know it because it'd be like, man, you know? But in time, there's a time for everything under the sun. So let me finish on this. I want to give you this analogy God gave me this morning. Uh, verse uh, 6, we're in the half, second part of it. Whether prophesy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. So if you see me, go, you know, I was going to give a prophecy the other day. And um, I think I have it on lock and private. And, you know, the devil was trying to tell me, you can't give three prophecies a day. Why? If God has filled me up with the gift of faith and has showed me all these things, I can prophesy according to the measure of faith I have. And I have a lot of faith today. So I can prophesy in proportionate to my faith. How many people think that God would tell them don't prophesy? Come on, somebody. I mean, can I have a little bit of time this morning? I don't even know if I'll get through Romans 12. But let, let me just speak to you uh, as, as I heard God this morning. Some people may not have a job right now. You know, I used to pray and pray and pray. In 2007, I was praying and praying and praying for my company to take off. But it didn't. Do you know what took off? My ministry. And I kept wondering, Lord, why can't I have a job? Because I, was, I, needed, I needed patrol cars. I needed contracts. I needed employees, but you can't hire employees without contracts, and you can't go out and patrol uh, w w without patrol cars. I'm talking about my protection company. But God knew exactly what he was doing because being so young in Christ, had I went out and started working 17 hours a day like I ended up doing, then, um, then it would have took me out of the church. Actually, in 09, it did take me out of the church. I had more money than I knew what to do with. I was just giving money away. I bought my friend a, something for three hundred dollars. I'm like, here, I got that. Uh, he wanted to go from unarmed security to armed security, and he needed three hundred dollars to go buy a, a used gun because we were doing armed only. And I'm like, here, just giving away three hundred. I mean, it was nothing to me. And we got so caught up in work, and he and Dean, my friend, he uh. He went to the same church I did. Next thing you know, neither one of us weren't in church at all. And we were working in the church. So now not only are we not getting fed the word, but they're missing two people while we're out there making this money. And the pastor would come around at night and see us working, uh, you know, out, you know, uh, come by our sites. And, and what a good man. One time he brought me some, uh, some burgers and I was hungry too. And he met me at the gate. How many people know that's a true man of God? He was checking to see if you're okay, and then he, he prayed for me, and he fed me. Well, then, so I'm just telling you, look, 
there was also a time where I was working so much. One week, I broke a world record for myself. And I started working at age 15. I just was self-sustained at an early age, you know. I had my own apartment when I was 16. Um, because I didn't want to live in the park. I was living in a park. Um, and my sister managed the apartment somehow. It's a long story, but I ended up being able to walk to work and end up getting a bike and then make enough money to, I mean, rent wasn't that much back then. I made like three twenty-five an hour or something like that. Um, and I think it was in 2010, I really felt God calling me into the ministry, but we were stuck in this 24 hour contract here. And then another one in Sutter County, way out on a levee in the middle of nowhere. And I just wanted them to end. I, I mean, I was putting all my money in savings. And I was just feeling this calling and tugging on the Lord to just, man, it's too much work. I mean, I would spend my time literally praying. And I'd look up and there'd be like a gang member, you know, at night. You know, and I'm like, man, I can't get caught slipping out here. See, so there's a time for everything. So I said, Lord God, this is, you know, I just want to praise you. I want to go into the ministry. I want to use my gifts. But see, look, wherever you're at, you need to be content. The Bible says to be in content in whatever condition you're in. Whatever state you're in. Remember we read that in Romans? To find yourself being content. If you're not working right now and you believe in and trusting and obeying God, it's for a reason. You may go out and have a job and all of a sudden uh, stop talking to God. I've been there. Listen, or you may be working too much and and making all this money and, and, and praying for rest. But if you came home and you didn't have nothing to do, God know that you'd have idle hands and an idle mind and the old and the old friends would come around and then you would slip away from God. So just look, if if if, if you need a job, God's gonna give you a job. If you need some rest, God's gonna give you some rest. That's the message. But no matter what because I've been in both. I've had all the money I've needed in the world, and I've and I've and I've uh, and I've, I've needed money before. But uh, I, I've worked uh, seventy to hundred hours a week, and I've not worked at all. Uh, I, I I took my business all the way to the top to work at federal sites, and and then I sold all my whole business I had, including all five calls. Uh, I've been on fire in the ministry, working in leadership positions. And I've been in churches, there's a picture on my Facebook where there's maybe like five people in there. And in and, and, and all, all those conditions and states, what I've learned to be is content in those states. Because wherever I'm at, that's where God wants me. Because the Bible says he orders your steps, he guides your path. Either that's true or it's not. When you woke up this morning, God has a plan to prosper you. No, but he also has a plan to not bring you harm. So if he sent you out tonight on the graveyard shift and maybe you were going to be harmed, well, he's not going to let you go out there because he's guiding his steps. If you will listen to him. So let's I just wanted to put that out. So be care. I guess the message in that is be careful what you ask for. If you're if you're begging God and begging God for begging God for something, you know, that that's outside of his will and it comes to pass don't get mad when you realize that you're backslidden and drinking again and out of the churches because you it's not because god did it to you it's because you did it to yourself and i'm only saying the stuff that i've been there and i know okay so then uh, verse seven is running long here but you know praise the lord anyway i want to play a song but, you know, I don't want to be challenged with YouTube and their ads and stuff. But as I'm playing this. I played two songs before and then I'm going to play another after. Uh, verse 7. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. A lot of people are wondering why the door hasn't opened for their ministry. Just be patient. It'll open. I promise you. Or he that teaches on teaching. See, he's now he's talking about the different gifts. Or he that exhorted on exhortation. Let's see what it says about that. Exhortation, just so you know, means encourages to his exhortation. And he who contributes, I'm reading from the Amplified now, let him do it in simplicity and liberality. In other words, uh, simply and a lot of it to give. Contributing. And to understand, look, to the ministry. This is contributing to the ministry. Let me make sure we got that straight. 
He who gives aid and superintends with zeal and singleness of mind. And he who does acts of mercy with genuine cheerfulness and joyful e eagerness. In the Amplified 9, and I know I'm jumping back and forth. I'm just being led by the Lord. Lord. And uh, 12, 9 says, Let your love be a sincere, a real thing. Not a fake love, a real love. Hate what is evil and loathe all ungodliness. Turn in horror from wickedness. Is that not deep? Turn in horror from wickedness, but hold fast to that which is good. So if you woke up and you felt some evil around you, you need to turn in horror from it and cling and hold on to Jesus. Where are we at? 10. Uh, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Let me read that and amplify it. Love one another with brotherly affection as members of one family. See, that's why I like the Greek. Because it, it expounds on what the word really meant. Do you understand that? It's saying the same thing. And some people get really upset about this. How can you get upset about someone here reading the word of God under the anointing? It's expounding what the original Greek said. Because one word, like you just say doxa, meant the glory of God. It can mean a whole sentence with just one word. Um, so as members, in verse 10, we're talking about showing brotherly affection as members of one family. And I knew that was of God because when I said brotherly affection, I said he was talking about love for the brethren. Are you with me? Giving precedence and showing honor to one another. In other words, give honor where honor is due and humble yourself to that person. So where are we at? 11. Not slothful in visit, business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And I'll put links to both so you can get your own revelation. Rejoicing in hope. I, I got. I, let's rejoice and be exceedingly glad today. Because what is our hope? Our hope is that Jesus Christ is coming and we're inheriting eternal life. Patient in tribulation, continuing in instant in prayer. Got to read that. Rejoice and exult in hope. Be steadfast and patient in suffering and tribulation. And be constant in prayer. Did you wake up and are you constant in prayer today? If not, maybe that's why you're uh, not feeling the way God wants you to feel. That's why the enemy put on your armor of God. Read Ephesians 6. I'll put a link to that. Renew your mind. Focus on Jesus. And then begin to open up your mouth and give him praise. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. Given to hospitality. This is how we're supposed to be. Look In verse 14. Remember my friend Dean? One time I stopped and these people were broke down and they were tore up for the floor. They were skin, Nazi skinheads, all tatted up with swastikas. And we were way out of bounds in our neighborhood. Uh, I mean, they, they call them the Juggaloos over there. And really, they were one of the most violent gangs. They, they carry axes. Anybody ever heard of the Juggaloos? They carry axes and from the insane clown posse and they put on the clown face. But these Juggaloos were Satan worshippers. We were in a Satan worshipping uh, white supremacist neighborhood. I mean, literally, when you go into the bathroom, it would be a hexagram and a pentagram, two lightning bolts, <coughs> and one of them's uh, SWP, Supreme White Power. And they had nine big old hunting knives. They wouldn't hesitate to stab you in a minute because they'd already been to the pen. And I said, Dean, stop the car. And I got out in full uniform, gun, taser, everything, and I gave them $20. And I said, here, take this for gas. Man, you should have seen the smile on their face. And they said, for us? I'm like, yeah, for you. They said, why? I said, God told me to give that to you. And when we, on the way to our location, it was a two-person thing, man. Lord, thank you for getting me out of there in Jesus' name. I used to go around with this oil. Where's my oil? I used to go around with this oil, and I'd see that lightning bolt and the hexagram, and I'd just write... I'd, I'd write Jesus on there with my finger and the dust on the window. I'd scratch out their thing and put Jesus and put anointing out. And Dean would be like, you're crazy. I'm like, that's right. Crazy for Christ. See, because I had a measure of faith, man. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but Dean used to say, you can't bless. You got to be careful who you bless and even who you're careful saying God bless you to. He chose carefully who he said God bless you to because he didn't want to bless the wrong person because they might be evil and you didn't want to bless somebody evil because they might go out and go do evil. And he had me like thinking like that too. You know, later he wrote a letter to me. I have a, a, a video on here. I don't know if it's up or not. 
uh, Dean wrote me a three-page letter because we ended up getting in a big altercation and just because of the satanic activity in the area and his faith wasn't strong and we weren't praying enough and, and he jumped the fence and cursed me out and quit threw his stuff at me and left and I believe it's because I don't believe it's because of Dean I believe it's because of demonic activity in the area and the pressure and stress of being uh, you know fighting gangs every night you know that's why I'm saying be careful what you pray for and um, I, I just looked at him in amazement and uh, and the things he said were certainly certainly not of God well, a year later, he wrote me a letter apologizing, and that letter just set us both free. And one of the things that he learned was you can bless anybody you want. He said, you're right. So I'm going to show you that in the Word. word. Jesus. Everybody just stop and pray for Dean. Father, we pray for Dean right now in the, G in the name of Jesus. Father God, bless him and keep him and cause your face to shine on him. Restore his family. Uh, make sure he has no lack and give him peace. And I don't care what the devil says. I speak life and blessings and peace over him. Where's this part? Uh, okay. Okay, now watch. 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Underline that. So anybody telling you that you can't go say God bless you to... Uh, to somebody that's persecuting you that they just that you're to pick up stones and start throwing at them and cussing them out well then they're going against contrary to the King James Bible Romans 12 verse 14 that says to bless them which persecute you bless and curse not rejoice with them that do rejoice everybody rejoicing today with me and weep with them with weep if somebody's crying they cry with them be of the same why be of the same mind towards one another mind not high things but condescend men of low estate and be not wise in your own conceits let's read 16 and amplify live in harmony with one another and do not be haughty i did i did a thing on haughty the other day this is what haughty says in amplified snobbish high minded and exclusive but readily we're in 16 verse 16 but readily adjust yourself to people and things and give yourself to humble tasks. Never overestimate yourself or be wise in your own conceit. That's a good word to start off with today. 17. Recompense. What does it say about recompense? Oh, yeah. 17. Repay. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Let, let's just close out in the Amplified, okay? So we can uh, just begin to go about our day uh, putting God first. Repay no one evil for evil. I know you ever heard that? Don't return evil for evil. But take thought for what is honest and proper and noble, aiming to be above reproach in the sight of everyone. Today, as you go about your day, your goal and your aim is to bless those. If you come under persecution, bless them. If someone's crying, go cry with them and, and be a living sacrifice unto God and to praise God. In other words, be like Christ. Put on the mind of Christ and be don't and then you won't even have to worry about this world because you will enter into his kingdom, enter into his rest, and everything you talk about is coming out Christ like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything that's going to come out of the world, you'll speak the word, you'll speak life, you'll speak blessings. Instead of, you know, flipping off the car and cursing at the one that just cut you off, you'll say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, especially on a Monday. Come on now. Th these are the end times, and we're out there to win souls, not put them down. Devil is a liar. I'm calling the devil a liar today. 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now, I studied this scripture for a year. Now, let me tell you something. We're supposed to love and pray and cry with everybody. But <coughs> there's some evil witches. Honestly, I know something about witches. Uh, I lived with two. I mean, actual witches who put curses and hexes on people. That's just nothing but the devil's... Uh, demons doing work and they're pretending it's magic there's no such thing as magic it's demons going out and performing evil acts on people right so and and they tend to drink or do drugs 
Now, I could never live with somebody like that. I literally couldn't live with them. I couldn't even hang with them for a couple of hours. So, look, it, let's read 18 again. If it be possible, as much as live with you, live peaceably with all men. I couldn't live with the witch who's on drugs. So, I, I refuse to do so. Is that biblical? Yeah, it sure is. But can I pray for them? Can you pray for a witch? You can pray for anybody you want to. As long as they're a human being with the soul. I mean, like a lot of people, they dislike Muslims. Well, you know, you should be glad that God called you. Because have you ever seen a Muslim convert to Christianity? It doesn't happen that often. But it can occur. They can be engrafted into an inheritance. I'm just flowing in the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's a line somewhere where it's got to be drawn. We don't pray for demons or the devil. But if it's a soul that God wants to win into heaven, then we can pray for them. I don't care what state they're in. I, I'm, see, I, 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 I have prayed for people using black magic against me. And you know what happened? It backfired on them. And God got the glory. I don't know why, where the Holy Spirit's taking us, but I know it's always into a good place. 19. Amplified, right? Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave the way open for God's wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. That's my thing. I gotta go. But if your enemy is hungry, feed them. And if he is thirsty, give them drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning hot coals upon his head. Do not let yourself overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is Minister Paul. That's my appointment. I gotta go. Peace, God bless.